Well, let's see what the story is today. Finally, you know, you get a day that it's decent weather during the week when nobody's out here. I can actually do some R&D. It's not a Saturday where everybody's sitting on every single spot. Here we are, it's a couple days after the uh, full moon. Um, I'll show you what the water temp is. Here's my sounder. 54.7 is what mine says. Okay, 54.7 degree water. It's 30 foot of water here in the Atlantic Ocean. So, we're going to see what the story is. This may turn into a report versus a fish catching anything. We'll see. <laughs> Last time I was out and I had live shrimp, I had my neighbor Tom and his buddy Raymond. And as long as the shrimp were alive, we caught fish. As soon as the fish went, or the shrimp went totally comatose on us, we didn't catch anything afterwards on the float rigs or anything. But then again, I think we left the dock that morning. It was 28 degrees. Much warmer today, even though I look, you know, a little uh, bearing sea-like here. It's only because I like to be comfortable, real comfortable. So I'll get anchored up here and see what the story is. Using my super prong jetty anchor full lead. Only thing that can make this better is big fish and sun. Big fish and sun. So we can go. Ooh, sun! All right. All righty, I wonder what that sound is. I haven't, I haven't seen that bright a pink on the spool in a long time. I'm basically... I'm getting smoked. Totally smoked. Yep, big ass red fish. Totally smoked. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Big ass red. Oh. Well, you know, you pull up to a spot, you think you're in the meat. I had one nice yellow mouth on my first drift. And ran through five or six shrimp. Oh, he's going right up in the rocks. On the bling rod. Candy apple red phoenix and a tricked out Daiwa Zillion. Here we go, folks.
Brutus T. Brutus T. Whew. Alrighty. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Let's see what he measures up at. Thirty two inches. Thirty two inches. All right. Yep. Pretty nice light tackle fight, but not what I came for. I came for the speckly ones. First drift. First drift of my float rig. I had that. Nice big fat yellow mouth, probably close to a two pounder. And that was it. And Mr. Redfish. That's it so far. Look what just happened to this spec uh, yellow mouth trout on the way back to the boat. Number one, he was eyeless. Number two, I don't know what the heck happened to him. <laughs> you know what I was just thinking about? This Phoenix crankbait rod XG2 fiberglass. No graphite in it whatsoever. Seven foot four inch moderate all right and a totally blinged out team Daiwa zillion reel see those boulders I'm fishing over those boulders this is 15 pound braid and I was just thinking about all these bass fishermen that I watch on YouTube. I just caught that that redfish that was 32 inches. It's probably 12 to 13 pounds. I just caught him over 10 ton granite boulders stacked in a pyramid shape covered in barnacles and every other crap underwater. And I just did that on bass tackle with a 15 pound mono leader and a little uh, number one hook. And I watched the bass guys with these stiff ass rods and these, and these uh, nine knot hooks on these jigs. And I just wanted to put that out there. Really, really, come on. They did that skit on Saturday Night Live where they went, really, really? Well, I'm saying, really, really? <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm not trying to poo-poo you bass guys, but, and I can understand you know some of it because I used I used to bass fish. You know, uh, man's jelly worm, purple or black rubber worm. That's all you ever needed in my day. Crawl that thing right across the bottom. That's all you needed. And I watch all this mystery tackle box and all this stuff. We don't do mystery tackle box stuff on my channel okay we catch big fish on light tackle i mean nothing against you bass guys believe it or not if people like carl on the keeping it real his channel man do i love watching carl i love watching carl 
Carl's my kind of guy. But then I watch some of the other bass guys and with all the lures and all that stuff. I just want you all bass guys to know what some of the saltwater guys do. They're 10 ton granite boulders. Their boulders are right under the boat. And I'm catching fish like that redfish that would have you never ever wanting to catch a bass the rest of your entire life. Because that's what happens. Look at Bill Dance. Bill Dance has a saltwater show. Uh, what does Hank Parker do? He's gone to Venice, Louisiana with his, uh, his son and caught the hell out of jacks and reds and stuff like that. Look at Roland Martin. He's addicted, addicted to the Mississippi Delta. Giant reds, him and his wife. You know, it, it, all, com it all comes around. I know you can only fish what you have. But come on, a nine-aught hook on a jig for the bass? You'd hate to take me bass fishing. You'd hate it. But us saltwater guys, we got it a little different, and we have a little bit different mentality. Ooh, look at the purple-green rubber, this, oh, this. Man, I don't think those bass, to tell you the truth, I don't think those bass, unless you're fishing some kind of gin clear water. Look at the water here. This is crystal clear for us. Green, dark green. These fish can't see shit underwater. You know? They can't see all, ooh, well this one's a purple black worm. And this one here is a purple brown worm. Get out of here. Get out of here. It's making for great mystery tackle box videos. That's for damn sure. I get such a hoot out of watching that stuff, but you'll never see that here. You'll never see it on my channel. All right, time to catch another one. Just thought I'd, felt like I had to get that off my chest after that big redfish. And we do that redfish stuff like that all the time around here. Finally, a speck with no specks. A speck with no specks. Oh, well, he's got a little bit on this side. Finally. Huh. He's hardly speck, speckled. It's in the box, baby. Hell, Daytona 500's coming up here in February. Stop into Jacksonville, do a little fishing. Another fine, another fine speckled sea trout right here, folks. Smoking it, smoking it.
digging shrimp combo meal. Smoking it, smoking it on the strapper rod. Ooh, I love the strapper rod. <laughs> Big fish, LT. Probably another big old Brutus T red bass. I would say it probably is. Woo! Oh, uh, so far so good on the tough line, or not tough line, uh, cast king. This is 20 pound cast king. So far so good on it. I, I, can't, I can't say that I've ever reported back. But, It is okay. I'm casting like a king. Oh man, that's what you love about the fairy wand. Let's perplex his ass to the boat. Another oversized red bass. Size red bass. He's a junkyard dog. Yep. This right here is what changes the bass fisherman's mind. And speaking of bass fishing, I'm going to show you something. You know this spy baiting? Japanese spy bait? Well, I'm going to show you how not so clever the Japanese are. They're really clever at marketing. Okay. I'm going to show you something. Because I've made my own spy baits. Because nobody makes HD ones for saltwater. There we go. Now they're probably 31, 32 incher. 10, 12 pounder. Let them go. Woo! All right. See? That is either a 3 8 or a half ounce jig. And all I do is put a shrimp on it. 20 pound mono leader going to 20 pound cast king. Because I'm feeling like a king while I'm casting. All right. All right, he has promised. I've been watching all this stuff on YouTube about spy baiting, spin baits, spin baits, spy bait. The art of finesse, controlled fishing, blah, blah, blah. Well, these plugs are like $14. Duo Realis, $14, $12.99. So I got the idea. That's a mirror lure. That is a standard brand for, off for inshore fishing in the south. 
and this is a surface lure and it's got double props just like the spy bait has little tiny double props here's another one a big one these are the larger size with three trebles all right here's a smaller one there's a smaller one you can see the size difference okay so you know what I did nobody will ever make these for for salt water but I'm gonna give it a shot what I did I drilled a hole in the belly since these are floaters and I added a bunch of weight to it and now they sl oh, they're slow sinkers about a foot a second this one I just drilled a hole in the belly and I had some stick lead just you know lead that was like the size of a I don't know smaller than a pencil drilled a hole in it shoved that in there and epoxied it okay so there you go there's there's the jetty wolf spy bait same thing with this one drill the hole put in a little stick weight and then epoxy it over it the whole idea if you don't know you should look it up if you're mr. bass or even if you're mr. saltwater is spy baiting is this thing that uh, I guess the Japanese came up with another one of their marketing ploys really um, because they're always into all the details. Details, 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 right? So they made a little short plug about this big. It's about three-eighths of an ounce. It's got a whole bunch of different shapes to it. And when you cast it out, it's a sinker and it wobbles. And what every bass fisherman will repeat to you is you throw it out to a certain depth and you just slowly reel it in on the contour. There's a contour down there that you're following, and the contour has suspended bass on it. And this will get the suspended bass. Because what do they do? They come in, they, they see it, the closer they get, the little props are turning, okay? And if you pause it, it shinnies sideways down to the bottom. Well, let me tell you, folks. These ain't doing a whole lot of fancy shimming, but they work. They sink, and it's very, I can't hardly show you because I mean this water here is, it's so rough and dark and everything. But I cast this out, I go one potato, two potato, three potato, click the reel over and just start reeling real slow. <coughs> and I guess this could be my finesse bait because it just goes along and the little props are turning. Is there any more than that? So I have, I don't know, a whole collection of mirror lures. So these were top water prop baits. Now they're subsurface prop baits. Okay. I'll show you another, just an old mirror lure. This is ser seriously vintage. This is a floater diver, a floater diver with a little prop on the back. Let me tell you, Mirror Lore, good God, I wish you made this still. This is one badass little plug. I mean, I've never used it. I took it out of my collection. I got 90, 95 vintage Mirror Lures or Similar to mirror lures, I got a lot of other baits that were people were trying to compete with mirror lure, or mirror lure was trying to compete with them. This here is going to be part of my trout arsenal. That is a little badass plug because it sits on the surface and dives down and makes a little slurp with this prop tail here. So they call these finesse baits um, the spy baiting. I don't know where they come up with spy baiting. Spy? Must be bad translations in English. 
And then they call it, they call it something else. The art of controlled something fishing or whatever. Good night. You know, as much as I love the Japanese products, sometimes they come up with the craziest stuff. But then they kind of came up with the uh, butterfly jigging, freestyle jigging too. And I love that. So it's just, I guess, you know, what you sort of believe. But Dave made his own for saltwater fishing. And I'll be sure to tell you when I catch a big trout on it, or any trout for that matter, because I'll be spy baiting. Ooh, don't let nobody see. I'm spy baiting. Okay, I think I got a flounder. On a jig and shrimp combo meal again. Yes, sir. I think I got me a flatty. Yes, I do. How did I guess that? Let's see, redfish, trout, and flatty. Ooh, he's throwing up all kinds of good stuff. So I guess you can call that my inshore slam. Cause I'm just about ready to go home. It's funny how many flounder I've been catching just messing around. Not a big one, but he's good enough. It's been such a crazy, crazy, crazy winter. Well, I ended up with my trout limit and one big yellow mouth. Threw back three trout a flounder, and the two redfish that you saw. So everybody who called me who wanted to go fishing this week, let's see, what did I do? I did 2.5 miles out, 2.5 miles back, and you could have probably caught a whole bunch more because I only had just one rod in the water. But, Nothing huge, just the standard operating sweethearts. God dang, is it noisy here, it's a navy. But now it's time to clean the donuts and look who I got peering into the boat. They're lurkers, lurking. Look at them. Look at them all lurking. Uh, that's pretty funny, isn't it? Get out of here. Now I got one jumping in the boat. All right, time to make the donuts. don't do mystery tackle box stuff on my channel.